fun and done during this show. Um, my bouncers are ready and they enjoy kicking people who are rude and disrespectful as I enjoy watching you leave because that's not what we're here for. Um, I'm going to really quickly, I'm going to let Jay in the box and then we're going to do the Q and Q. I, yeah, I think that that's the best thing about this show is y'all can be putting groceries away, you could be working, you could be doing laundry, and you know you can interact when when you want to. But this is definitely a good hour where if y'all just need something in your ear, you know, every Friday from ten to eleven a.m., we're here for you. Um, so this show, for those of you that are new, is based on life lessons, right? We've all been through things. Things suck sometimes a lot right but we can't give up and so the guests are here to share a lesson that life taught them and hopes to motivate someone listening it may be you it may not be but there's always someone listening that um that that this show helps and if it's not y'all i know it helps me um and this show helps me a lot so um without further ado we're going to do the q and q all right, and this is the quote in question. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the favorites. Um, as you can see, you need to keep your comments respectful. Jay did give him a warning, and he didn't have to, and he is instantly removed. So if you want a cool place to hang where the cool kids are all at right now, you've got to be nice, okay? So my Q&Q &Q today, and I do want you guys to answer in the comments, okay? says, my happiness grows in direct proportion to my acceptance and in inverse proportion to my expectations. When your expectations differ from reality, how do you cope? Thank you for the gifts. He's snoring. You don't hear him snoring? Seriously. Hi, Polka. Hi, everybody. Oh, gee, I see all y'all. Okay, he's literally over there snoring logs. So now you go to the gym. Okay, okay. What do you guys do? Listen, look, read this. My happiness grows in direct proportion to my acceptance and in inverse proportion of my expectations. When your expectations differ from reality, how do you cope? Jay says, chill pills. T says, I don't know how to cope. <laughs> so I want to share just something really quick before um, horse and ace decide which one of y'all's going first. It's up to you two. Um, I, I want to share something that, of course, in the, the hard times, I don't, I didn't want to hear it. I wanted, I wanted not to believe this. I wanted to think it was stupid. But sometimes, and the way that it was, ref, was, was, was said to me was sometimes our unanswered prayers are exactly what we need. And I thought, the hell you mean? How, how are you going to tell me what's good and what, you know what I mean? And like, in the moment, I was like, don't even talk to me. And then time goes on. And I realized 
that what I thought I wanted, what I wanted, what I needed, what I needed, and I use the quotation marks because it wasn't a need, it was a want, right? Was the exact opposite of what I really needed. And God, I hate that they were right, right? Like, hi, Joe. Hi, everybody. Um, I, uh, I hate that they were right in that because now I know that when I'm doing things, and when it doesn't go my way, now I know there's a reason for that. And I don't like it, but it, eventually we're going to figure out what it is. We're going to move forward with it. And, and I'll probably be thankful it didn't go the way that I had originally planned. So just remember, you guys, that when your expectations differ from acceptance, so the question was, when your expectations differ from reality, how do you cope? Just remember, guys, that sometimes what we think we need, we don't. And that if we just keep pushing forward <clears throat> one foot in front of the other, we're going to be given what we need. And life is what we make of it. So if you're going at things positively and you're like, you know what, this didn't work out, but, but. Let's see what's going to come. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm sitting in a situation right now where five years ago, I would shut this app down. I would crawl into a hole and my whole life would then go to crap because I didn't know how to cope with things, bad things when they happened to me. And I took things very personally rather than knowing that this isn't me. This is somebody else and their insecurities and they're simply expressing that through my, you know, blaming me, whatever. I don't, I don't know how to word that. Right. So yeah, this was, this was good. So for those of you guys that missed it, you can answer, but we're about to let him in the box. It says my happiness grows in direct proportion to my acceptance and in inverse proportion to my expectations. When your expectations differ from reality, how do you cope? And my, my answer to that was, we've just got to remember you guys that sometimes what we think we need, what we want, it's not what we need. And you have to just keep pushing and you can't quit. And are you guys ready to meet Ace? Now y'all are going to want to favorite both of my guests today. Okay. You are all going to want to favorite both of my guests. The... <clears throat> Just be ready. They're awesome. Again, you guys, welcome to Lessons Learned. My name is Silly Lily. We meet here every Friday morning. I'm letting you in um, at 10 a.m. And we uh, we talk about lessons life has taught us. Hi, Ace. Good morning, Lily. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Is it early for you? Am I, am I getting you out of bed early on a Friday? <laughs> It is, it is, but I have to move houses after this, so um, I was going to be up anyways. I got a lot of work to do today, and uh, it's nice to be up early, especially um, based off the topic I'm going to be speaking about, because uh, usually I will be in bed at this point based off of some of the struggles I'm going through, so. All right, um, well, let's, what What are we going to be, today? first of all, thank you very much for being on my show, and I guess let us know what our lesson is going to be. Um, the lesson's going to be is knowing that you're not alone. Um, which I'm still teaching myself. I've learned it, but it's a never, it's a never ending lesson that I'm learning. So, you know, I hate that you picked this topic because I just was talking about something like this last night. Oh, you're going to get me in my feels. All right, let's do this. Let's well, do really, it. I don't get nervous often. I'm in sales in life and I'm really usually good at public speaking, but like, this is a topic that I don't usually speak out about, but that's why I wanted to do it is because it's not spoken out about enough, especially coming from men. Um, so, you know, this is a lot, a lot of this is for the men out there to give them hopefully some courage to speak out and know that they're, they're not alone, but it's for the women also and whatever you identify as. Um, so yeah, my, uh, you know, my, I'm going to start from the very beginning. I know I was brought up with a great family. Um, I, I can't, I can't complain. Um, you know, I've got amazing parents and amazing family surrounding me. I was an only child. I was brought up, you know, I was definitely, I was definitely pampered and, 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 and taught and taught proper, um, proper, you know, principle and, and taught to be a good person and to treat people appropriately and, you know, to be humble and to earn everything that you have to work for. Um, but you know, as I grew up, 
with 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 that came a lot of struggle because uh you know i was given a lot of opportunity to get out there in the world so you know i you know i, I took advantage of it in a good way but you know at a young age i maybe walked or i maybe ran a little bit before i learned how to walk um so i you know i, I moved out to a different province at the age of uh, 17 on my own um, i was partying i was getting into you know stuff i shouldn't have been getting into um, I was living life as you would call it as a young, you know, adult or, you know, late teenager. And, you know, it, it's always, it's always amazing and, and fun until, you know, you hit a wall and it starts going the other way. Um, not only have I hit that wall once I've hit it many times, <laughs> um, but you know, I always was told growing up from, you know, the older generation, like my father and grandfather and things like that, that, you know, there's no such thing as mental health and, you know, men's got to be the strong one and we have to you know hide our emotions and you know tuck those away and just be the person that's always you know strong for everyone else and, and there for everyone else so i have always tried to be that person that uh, opens myself up and, and is there for everyone else um and i guess the biggest biggest lesson that i'm gonna continue on and, and talk about here is knowing that you're not alone but it's also there's two lessons here it's also knowing that like you know you can't really help yourself or sorry, you can't really help someone else until you've helped yourself. And that's what I'm learning now um, is I'm, I'm, I'm starting to take a step back from always trying to um, help everyone else because I'm not fully helped yet. <laughs> um, so, so, so my journey has gone through um, some, some very, very deep, deep depression and anxiety, um, which I never really told myself or allowed myself to understand that I had. I just was always wondering why I was, you know, sad and upset, but I'd never show it. I'd always keep it, keep it hidden. And then I'd have my, you know, my bursts out, but I'd do it alone and I would never share it with anyone or I, or people would, would not understand why I would disappear for days on end or for weeks on end and, and think that, and think that like, Hey, like, why, why is he gone? Why is he disowning us? Why is he not here for his friends? And then they would come at me and I was the problem because I was the one being, you know, the guy that disappeared and not there for people when I was always the one that was the strong one. Um, and you know, as my journey went on, I, you know, I, I went through some, some serious, serious, um, loss in my life. I lost my best friend at a young age. I lost, um, some close family members and then it all really trickled down. I, I, I had a year where, um, was last year actually. So this is kind of, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but last year is where I'll, I'll skip, I'll skip the middle, the, the middle ground and go to last year is where it really got strong for me as I, you know, I went through a. Um, I was engaged, getting married and I, you know, our separation was perfect and there was nothing wrong, nothing bad happened. Um, it was exactly about a year ago, um, to this week and, you know, well over that relationship, nothing, nothing that, that affected me, but it, it left me alone. Um, and instead of me reaching out to everyone and when everyone reached out to me is I disowned the entire world, including my family. Um, and I, I stayed in my hole and I got into a dark, dark place and I got very, very deeply depressed. I was having bad thoughts. I was laying in bed for, for three days straight on end. I was, you know, crying to myself. I was ignoring the world and just literally, you know, self-destructing in a sense. And, um, you know, it took, it took a lot for me to try to find something to have a way to, uh, you know, get back out there socially, uh, which I'm still working on, but that's when I found this app. And, uh, truthfully, I opened the app just to start socializing with women again. Um, and then I saw this live button and I, you know, hit the live live button. Didn't know what streaming was at the time. Um, jumped, jumped into a stream and everyone, everyone's like, Hey, come in the box. I didn't know what that meant. I thought it was sexual at the, at the time <laughs> and I was like oh my lord um but anyways I got in and then we started talking and um you know they were like oh you you got you got some good energy about you you should totally you know try this and and I did and um you know it, it got it's it's been a very emotional journey for me on here uh it's it's been a lot of ups a lot of downs but it's definitely been my saving grace um because this this app and the people like yourself, Lily, uh, a ton of the people that are here supporting me today, and and just everyone that I'm still meeting to, to this point, and and I'm excited to meet in the near future, are the ones that have allowed me to know that I'm not alone. 
because on and off app, they've been there for me. And it doesn't, it, you know, people can always say in real life or this is off, this isn't real life. For me, this is real life um, because this has allowed me to meet people that I've met in, I've met outside the app face to face and, and, and ones that have been there for me when no one else was. So um, I've actually can openly admit for the first time publicly, I think like, without to someone's face, I've maybe said it to a couple of people, but that I've actually gone to doctors and spoke about my, my mental health with them. And I, I, I take medication and I have started to get myself back out there. Um, I'm, I've slowly got myself out of my shell. I've started going back out. I've started, you know, trying to take control of my life again, where, you know, I, I, I've, I put myself in a financial situation. I put myself in a, a deep hole personally. I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of family members just because I disowned everyone. And I'm slowly trying to earn that back. Um, and it's not that I did anything wrong. It's just that people didn't understand, but I didn't speak out about it. And that was the problem. And it wasn't that, it wasn't that, that I would go back and, and, and change anything because I couldn't and, and I had no choice. It's just how I reacted to the situation and, and all the things I went through in my life. And it all piled up. So everything from my childhood, uh, not my childhood, pardon me, from my teenage years and my, my young adulthood. Um, and then my, my last 10 years, uh, being 10, 12 years, being a, you know, a grown man and out on my own, um, has built up because I held it in and, and never talked about it. And it all came, came crashing down within this last year. And, you know, the one thing that I've, I've learned as I'm slowly speaking to people, you know, professionally and, and now, you know, getting the help that I need and, and, and speaking out about it and being expressive and then also trying to be there for people as well. Not in a sense as a professional, which I am not, I don't have um, professional advice to give, but just being there as a, as an, as an ear to listen um, has allowed me to understand that, you know, I have my issues that I need to work on and I'm slowly working on myself as well. Um, and I, I couldn't be happier to say that I'm, I'm on the up and up now. And, you know, I've met some amazing people along the way. I've actually had people tell me that I've helped them save their lives. I've helped them be there in a situation where no one else was. And it, it, you know, it gives me the satisfaction to know that like what I'm learning myself is allowing other people to learn for them as well. And, you know, us just, us just doing that for each other helps, helps other people know that like with the more that we come together and be one and be unity and like, and pull everyone, um, to understand that like, Hey, like it's okay to speak about it. Like there is good people out there. There, there is, uh, there is a voice of reason <laughs> and there, there is purpose for you. Um, it's just, it's just going to make your life that much better and you'll be able to find your answers sooner and you'll be able to, 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 you know, continue your journey a lot stronger. So that's, that's, that's my lesson learned. I'm still working on it. Um, but I am, I'm open to always speak about mental health, uh, men's mental health, depression, anxiety. I don't always know how to explain it, um, but I'm always there to listen. And I think the most important thing is, is just, you know, if anyone ever needs a, 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 someone to just, to just vent to, or someone to speak, speak to that's been through something or wants to just have someone to talk to, I, I, I'm always there for you. And I'm always, I'm always there, whether it's, you know, whether it's about something that you've been through, whether it's about someone that you've lost, whether it's about, you know, a breakup, whether it's whatever the case is, uh, I can understand because I've been through a lot of it. I lost, I lost um, seven close people to suicide last year in my life while I was going through my separation uh, from my, my um, breakup and while I was trying to find myself in my dark place. So like, um, it, it was a lot to, to try to keep myself around going through all that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it, but that's, that's my story. So, yeah. I, I, I want to go back to just for people who don't understand, who've never really faced depression. Um, it literally, it immobilizes you. You don't want to move. You don't want to eat. You don't, you don't care. It's, it's a very hard place to pull yourself out of. Um, I've had to do it a couple times myself. I've hit some walls, you know? Um, but for those of you that have never been through it and, and if you have somebody that's maybe disappeared from your life and they're saying that it's, it's been from depression, you guys have to understand they're only doing 
what, like for me anyways, I only did what I knew I had to do to survive that day. Exactly. And sometimes y'all, I'm sorry, I love some of y'all, but some of y'all carry a heavy package. And a lot of the conversations are based off of you, which is generally fine. But sometimes I can't handle your package plus mine. Sometimes I just got to do me. So, and not necessarily disappearing because I don't still love you. I'm just disappearing because I got to fix me first because I can't do it. Like he said, I can't do a damn thing for you until I fix myself. You know, so it's, it, it's, it's a very hard and scary thing to, to go through. So you got to lo look into it. If y'all haven't looked into it, look into it and really read up on it because it is real and it is hard. <laughs> really? You were just snoring a half a second ago. You have one eye closed still. Jesus. <sighs> this dog. Now he's going to come over here and want to sit in my lap. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then something else I want to talk about is, is um, you'd said that you know, your whole thing is, is you guys, if you missed it, the whole topic right now is we're not alone. We, we've all been through things. We all have people. We just have to let them be there for us. Um, but that's what my emojis stand for. The infinity symbol and the strong arm is forever stronger together because, you know, going at things alone and solo is the hardest thing you're ever going to do for yourself. You know, some little things, maybe at work, you got to push a little harder and whatnot. But at the end of the day, my pack of people here are, they help keep me going. They push me to do better. They believe in me. And that's what we all need. You know what I mean? You just have to see that they're there. Don't let the wrong people in. Don't ignore the red flags. But every one of us does have someone. If you're just, you know, true to yourself and you are who you are, the right people are going to find you. They will find you. You're going to have some bumps in the road, but they will find you. Mm. You know, mm. like I, I'm, I've got a bump. Like I just, I just, I was going 80 in this speed bump, like 10 times the size of a normal speed bump just literally blew up in the road right in front of me. And I can't stop. And that, that's where I'm at. I just, I just hit that and it, I'm launched and I'm waiting, <laughs> Wait. but I can either recoil and do like I said, and I said this, you know, I could go back to my room, curl up in a ball and pretend like nothing's wrong. Sleep the days away. Right. But that's not going to fix anything. That's not going to make me stronger. So we're going to sit and we're going to fight it, you know, but that's, that's crazy. Life is crazy. Um, at what point, or was there any specific point that when you realized that you're not alone? Like, do you remember that moment? Cause I can, I can, I can specifically remember the first time I didn't feel alone in a really long time. Yeah. When, when it got to a point where I, um, where I disappeared from the world for like well over a week straight, like not one message to anyone, not one phone call answered. I even turned my phone off actually. Um, and I had, I had a person that I would have never expected show up at my door. Um, and they showed up with a meal, not that I needed it at the time, but they showed up with a meal and actually a case of beer, which probably wasn't the best thing to show up with, but <laughs> um, it, it was, it was, you know, there's, a, that's a whole other topic I could speak about because along that whole journey, there was some, there was some addiction and there were some other things that came along with it, but you know, I don't want to get too deep into the conversation today. I want to keep it focused, but, um, but yeah, they showed up with a case of beer and, and a meal and, you know, and, and I didn't want to answer the freaking door. And they they were screaming and making noise and my dog was going off and, and I, I had to answer or else it was just, I was going insane and I opened it. And then I like the feeling that I had when I connected with that, with that, an old friend, that outside world. And it was as much as I was so angry and didn't want that and just wanted to be left alone. And I thought I was found. I was just like, I'm actually getting goosebumps right now thinking about that feeling. Like literally my hair is like up. It gave me goosebumps. And I was just like, yeah okay 
okay and then from there it was just you know it was just every day working on myself and that person just sat there they didn't need, and the best part that 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 was about that whole scenario and connection and interaction was they never once asked anything they just said hey let's sit down let's have a meal how you doing what's going on like how you been what, are you doing tomorrow? what do you want to do you want to go what do you, you want to do something today let's hang out right and like that was it and it was all i needed so uh bless that person's soul and now i try to be that person i try to be that person for everyone that you know that can see that maybe someone is in a bad place when no one else is recognizing it and try to really really just give them that extra push to be like hey i'm here like just talk to me like just remember I'm boundaries yes boundaries though yes. just don't exhaust yourself for people who aren't willing to put into themselves yeah i have it's been okay to be I've there it's like okay to, to always remind them that you're there it's okay to give in but i found myself giving and giving and giving to somebody who didn't even they didn't they, they weren't doing anything for themselves do you know what i mean does that make sense they drain you of energy um and I've been a victim to that i've been a victim of being having my energy drained for someone that that is not using you for it but they just won't they're not willing to 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 take your energy and they deflect it and it just all you're doing is just wasting energy that can be given to someone that is 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 needing it or willing to accept it so yes boundaries is huge too and understand your boundaries there's nothing wrong with helping people and talking to people but some people will will take advantage and mistake the kindness for weakness so um you know as an as a fellow empath just mm -hmm. I, I know it's hard. I know that boundaries <laughs> is like that word for us because, you yeah. know, but just just remember those because you do have an amazing soul and I don't want anyone to take advantage of that. I appreciate that. And I just want to say thank you for having me on here. Uh, it's not easy. Your show is definitely probably the hardest show I've been on to speak yeah. on. So um, and it's a freaking morning. You. It's in the friggin' morning, so it's like I just woke up and I'm not a morning person. Obviously, I would normally sleep all day until you someone did wonderful, forces me though. to get up. But so. look, you you are a morning person. You got on, you're making differences, you're changing lives, and it's only 10.30 in the morning, Marsh. Oh, boy, I know, I know. I just want to say, like, first of all, Lily, you've helped me in, in you know, our short, short term of knowing each other, so you become a great friend, and I support you 100%, and I support this show, like, exponentially. Thank you for all the people that have showed up for me. Hello to all my new friends in here. Um, anyone, I, I'm always, or anyone and everyone, I'm always there if you need to reach out. My socials are attached to to my name. It's Ace Marsh. It's This is a name change, um, you know, from a lovely person that, that took Amelia last night, which I'm grateful for. Congrats. <laughs> uh, thank you. And, and yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, and I appreciate you guys, and you are not alone. All right. So before I let you go, do you have any auctions or other shows you're on, or do you have anything you're putting on that you want to share? <clears throat> um, yes, I have uh, just an event tomorrow with Top Badge Summer. Um, so at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be um, live with with uh, Glenn Coco. Me and her will be in the box with Top Badge Summer, and we will be doing Halloween face painting for an hour while they tell murder stories. Okay, okay. I know, I know, okay, I've, I, yeah, 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 I've seen that show. She's she's awesome with makeup. Y'all, yeah, she, so autumn, <laughs> autumn, right? Top Edge Autumn, right? Summer, summer. Is it summer? Summer. She used to be Autumn? Or am I she thinking of someone different? She might have, she's got blonde hair, she's Scottish. Did she just post on IG the, the green? She looked like the green? She had a red, I don't know, I'm not sure. I don't know, it might be someone just, so anyway, okay, so we have Top Edge Summer and there's a Top Edge mm -hmm. Autumn badge autumn and they they apparently both do amazing makeup and they They're both have seasonal it. names so like i guess it's a thing so you just you know if you got to be winner if you want to be the next amazing makeup artist we've got yeah. we, and fall we need fall and winter y'all <laughs> so that's at 6 30 p.m to 7 30 p.m eastern standard time tomorrow um and then i have a show that is a um has been approved to be featured i don't believe it's featured yet which is uh, Kawhi's show called Gen Wars, which I'm oh, on right. on Monday at midnight. Oh, Kawhi great too. Kawhi was on here. She's great too. At Monday at midnight, and um, and then the following, not this weekend, but the following Saturday, I'm in the championship round of of Yes Jess's. I'm sold. So I won her her mm -hmm. show, and I'm going up against all the winners of the year to see who can nice. sell the best items. And then uh, lastly, I actually do have my own featured show that's been approved that will be 
coming out in the near future, which I've been slacking very hard on. Um, get on it. I'm going to get you on it. It will be Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Thanks. called Heart Rate with Ace Marsh. So hey, stay tuned for that. And uh, other than that, um, you know, it's the Good Vibe Tribe, and you're always welcome Thank to come you. hang out with me. Yeah, make sure you guys favorite him. Add him on IG. He does post all of his stuff. And if you're extra nice to him, he will actually help promote your stuff too. So y'all make sure you please favorite Ace, Mar Ace Marsh is his regular name. And the TGVT is the Good Vibe Tribe. So hit him up. I will let you go. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much and then horse you got a few minutes before i let you in the box you guys if you're just tuning in welcome to lessons learned i'm silly lily that was ace marsh and up next we have horse if you miss ace's lesson he wants you to know that you are not alone not a single person in this world needs to be alone if you more or less how i've 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 interpreted it is if you go out there and you do good things and you're good to people and you just keep trying to be better today than who you were yesterday, just know that good things are going to come. The right people are going to find you. Your people will find you and they will be there. Okay. That's, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that we all go through things, no matter how hard it is. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. But at the end of the day, if you're being true to who you are and you're being positive, Good things will come. Sometimes it takes a longer journey, but it it's I, I can guarantee you that if you're doing the right things and you're staying positive, better things are to come, right? I'm not saying you're going to get what you want because some, another lesson we learned before that was what we think we want is not what we need. So here's the part where we do a couple of self-care questions and tips. And my first question to all of you is, what have you done for yourself today? What have you guys done for yourself today? You took a nap already? Man, I had to get up early and I'm not going to get a nap. Yeah, Wildfire, we'll talk about that after. You ate? What did you eat? <laughs> Pocahontas says, you made me get up early too for your show, Lily. <laughs> Put on war paint. Aw, you had a donut, Mountain Dew. Oh my God, watching my show. Eight juicy sausages. Where's mine? Watching me. <laughs> Fruit and eggs. That sounds yummy. I could go for a good peach right now, man. Now I want peaches. Dang it. <sighs> right? And share your donuts. What the heck? Y'all, thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the favorites. During the show, I can't thank you one-on-one -on -one for them, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but I want to thank y'all for tuning in to Lessons Learned today. We are at the halfway point. We are about to introduce um, horse into the box. I may very well be holding my dog for a good part of our conversation, horse, <laughs> because now he's underneath my chair rocking me back and forth trying to get the thing off. So... Oh my God, Josh, please. Anyways. Ooh, here you go. What do you love most about you? What is, what do you love most about you? In your awkward vibe. Baby boy says everything. My mind says honesty. While Fires is making people happy, Bella says, my kind heart. Oh, my God, T. T, you got something brown on your nose. The way that you love and care, loyalty and commitment. Me too, Duck, and that's okay. <laughs> she, Duck says, I'm so awkward, I learned to dig it. I love. So, yeah, I, I think... I love my ability to accept and understand, but that's like a blessing and a curse all in the same time. But I think I also love about me, which stems from this, is it doesn't show anything about what your actions don't tell me anything about myself. They, they tell me about you. 
and it, and 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 I have to remember also that although maybe sometimes I get taken advantage of, once you do me dirty, I am one thousand percent okay with cutting you off and never speaking to you again. I have no guilt and no shame in that. Zero. Because at what point were you my friend? At what point was any of that even real? Hmm. Right? So forgiving myself is, is something I'm learning on, learning and, and doing and dealing with. But just because that person pulled the wool over my eyes doesn't mean the next person should have to suffer. And that's another lesson that I'm trying to figure out and learn because what the one person did to me is not what other people are going to do to me, right? So I have to learn that although there's bad people, there's also really good people. And although I did give some people plenty of time, um, you know, I had one, one lady was, was one of what I thought was one of my good friends. And it took one conversation for me never to speak to her again. You know what I mean? There are two sides to some stories, but some stories are literally in front of you in black and white. And you can't, you cannot lie to me about it because I have proof. Do you feel me? Some people are going to tell you and they, they are going to work themselves up into a way that you, you can't, there's no way that they're, that they can lie to you because they have done nothing but talk you up and make you feel like you're on top of the world. And they're always there at the right time with the right things. Blah, 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 blah. But that was all a lie. That was all to get what they wanted from you. So when, when you're, don't ignore the red flags. I guess that's, that, that is, that is what I'm going to say. Don't ignore the red flags. And I am not saying that listen to other people's opinions of, of other people, but when you notice a red flag and someone has told you something, you need to remember what you heard and you need to make sure that like, but that there, there's defending yourself and there's still the truth. A person can put themselves in a situation where they need to defend themselves, right? But at what point does what's in front of me in black and white, what are you defending? I have the facts in front of me. At this point now, you're just lying to me. So like, you can't ignore that. Okay, tips, because we got to get horse in the box. Um, tip number one, with winter fast approaching, you need to get your butts outside. Enjoy this last bit of the days before this several inches of snow is, is headed to our way, you know, to the ground. And then it's going to be miserable. And although I did promise y'all a couple of winter hikes, I'm not excited about them. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be cold, but I know at the end, I will feel a little bit better. Um, challenge yourself to learn a new skill, whether it's cooking, learning, knitting, macrame, dancing, hiking, you know, get yourself out there, try new things, snowboarding. There you go. You could try that this year. I'm not going to try that. I would maybe ski, but you think that I'm going to snowboard your out of your ever loving mine. Okay. Cause I can't even stand up on a skateboard, let alone a snowboard going down a hill. Right. I will ski. No, no, you can snowboard. I will ski. I can do the skiing, but snowboarding in me, I'd like to stand up for most of the hill. You feel me? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be going down. The snowboard's going to be stuck in the hill while I'm tumbling. <laughs> All right, horse, I'm letting you in the box. Let's go. Let's see what horse is going to talk about today. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I want to start off by thanking you for being able to be on my show. Um, well, thank you for having me here. 
I'm I'm just gonna dive into uh, what is our what is our topic today? Cause I'm antsy. Um. Well, I'm gonna dovetail dovetail off of Ace. And so get your tissues ready because I've been sitting here trying not to ruin my own makeup because, um, like I said a, a little while ago, and and I don't know if anybody saw it because comments are just going crazy. Um, my story is someone else's survival guide. And I know that. So I'm sitting here fighting tears and it's not something that I've really cried a whole lot about. Um, but I have, I got my, my tissues, you know, they're right here. Um, (laughs) grab tissues, use your collar, whatever, because this is, um, we're, we're apparently getting super heavy because I'm, I'm completely dovetailing off of ACE. Um, I also want to reiterate that, um, don't give up. You're not alone. There are resources to help you always resources, whether it's a friend or, um, it's a website and, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit, but, um, my story is a little different in perspective as in it is something that. I went through on an incredibly personal level, um, December 11th, 2020, my husband took his own life. I didn't know that. And I always kind of stop and I let that sink in for people because they're not sure I said it right the first time I said it and I didn't stutter. Um, I lost my husband to suicide on December 11th, 2020. That morning, um, he was working nights. He'd gotten a job working nights and I worked 11 to eight. So by the time I got off work, he was already at work. <coughs> so we had our mornings. Normally he'd get home about 5.30 in the morning, about the same time I was getting home from feeding the horses. And, um, but he got home late and I wasn't quite sure why, you know, I'd called him and he goes, oh, I'm just running behind. And I said, okay, you know, I'll see you when you get here. He came home. I fixed a meal, which was his dinner, my breakfast. You know, we talked a little bit. He gave me a hug. He gave me a kiss. He said, I love you. I will see you in the morning. I'm going to bed. And that morning hasn't come because he, um, I got a phone call at 647 PM. I just come back from break and it was sitting down at my desk. It was customer service representative. My phone rang, it was the police department. And they said, uh, your daughter has called 911. There has been a medical emergency. You need to go home right now. And I said, what happened? And they said, you need to go home. We know you're at work, you need to go home. And I said, well, I gotta tell my supervisor. So I got up, phone still in hand, went to my supervisor and I said, look, um, I've got PD on the phone. They're telling me that I have to go home. There's been a medical emergency. And my supervisors kind of looked at me with this huge amount of skepticism and the dispatcher um, knew she was on speakerphone because you can tell. And uh, she spoke up and she said, there's been a medical emergency. She needs to go home. And if you don't let her go home, we will come get her. So they let me go home. I got almost all the way home. I was five blocks away and I saw the lights. Um, but I also know that our ambulance lights and fire department lights are different color than cop lights. And there was no ambulance. There was no fire truck. I got to the stoplight right in front of my house because we lived on a a corner on arterial road. And that's when I saw the crime scene tape and I couldn't go because there were three cars in front of me. The light finally turned green. I did everything, but push those cars out of my way, pulled in my own driveway. The cops came out and they were like, who are you? Why are you here? You need to leave. And I'm like, dude, this is my house. You know, my house, you need to tell me why you're here. <clears throat> and about that time, my daughter um, was 17 at the time. She came out of nowhere. I don't know where she came from. Just out of the clear blue sky, it just about tackled me to the ground in hysterics. She couldn't even talk. Um, It took a couple minutes for me to get the rookie cop to tell me what happened. And my life changed forever. I went to work as a wife. I came home a widow. 
And there were no indications. There were no clues at all that he was even remotely suicidal, other than the fact that he had attempted it once before. So all this stuff that you find online of people saying, oh, well, there's signs, you know, you got to look for this and you got to look for this and you got to look for this and you got to look for this. You will never see them. Yeah. You will never see them. Somebody who is sitting there telling you, um, oh, I'm going to kill myself. I'll see you at my funeral, you know, on and on and on all that other stuff. That's a cry for help but they're not really serious. They just want somebody to see them and they want somebody to hear them. There was no warning. Like I said, my husband gave me a hug and a kiss and said, I love you. I'll see you in the morning. I haven't seen that warning yet. So you, you have to focus on getting help when you know you need it. You know, you're not alone. There are so many people who love you and care about you and who will sit down and listen, you're, you're never truly as alone as you think you are. You just have to reach out and get that help. And one of the ways to get that help is I went on Google for the show, and, and I can show it to you here. All I typed in in my Google search was suicide hotline. And a website, you know, a little thing popped up, says help is available, speak with someone today. And there's a little link that says learn more. And you click that learn more and this huge page pops up. There are 35 countries listed on this one website. And I know there's more, but there's 35 countries that have the country, the organization, the website, and a phone number. In the United States, the phone number for the suicide hotline is no longer an 800 number. It's a three digit code. It's 988. I was so excited when that came out because that's so much less to type then you know that one eight hundred yeah three versus ten numbers is way easier to remember yes so now it's it's nine eight eight you know in the uk it's one one six one two three you know i can go through the entire list but i don't want to bore you but every all all 35 of these countries two countries have multiple numbers um so reach out to them if you feel like you don't have any friends or any families to call reach out to them. That's why they're there. They're there to help, you so know, something I, I want to, I want to take advantage of this moment, um, to explain something to you guys too, especially if you're a streamer and if you have someone in your comments that has stated that they're going to harm themselves or someone else, you need to screenshot it. You need to turn it in. Okay. And if you think it's one of you who's sitting there waiting back, who's, who's normally a troll that would chime in and say something smart alecky back to a comment like that, like, go ahead and do it, or why haven't you done it yet? You are now an accessory to that suicide. You are facing felony time in prison just by that statement, okay? And here's why it's important that we report it. And that we get the person who is saying this stuff temporarily banned until they stop or permanently removed if it continues because there are sick mother truckers out there that feed off of those types of, of people's vulnerability okay and they will push them to do something that maybe they ultimately normally wouldn't do so please 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 you guys when someone says something like that i don't care if you think they're joking You've got to take it seriously and do your part to make sure that, you know, you've covered all areas. You send to check. If you know where they're at, send someone to check, especially if there's kids, because if you have any soul, if something were to happen to that individual and you didn't help and, and those kids got to walk in on that or something like that, like I couldn't live with myself knowing that I could have done something to help. You know, that's me. That's not everybody, but you got to do and make sure that that stuff stays out of your streams and that you report it. Because if this person is serious, it could lead to serious way more harm if the wrong person heard them say that or seen them type that. Okay. So the, it, the damage to children is incalculable. My daughter was home alone 
when my husband died. She is the one who called 911. She was 17 at the time. She had, you know, enough of a head left on her shoulders to be able to call and report it before she called me. And three years later, she still has anxiety. She still has nightmares. She will still call me or text me in the middle of the day and say, Mom, I'm having a bad dad day. I can't. I need you. Um, I have nightmares. I have PTSD from it too, because the, the impact, we're, we're going to talk about the impact a little bit. It, it's a lot more than people think they, you know, when you're suicidal and, and you think, oh, well, it's just going to be over. Everybody's going to be better. You know, um, it's not, it, it, it's not, you, you leave a huge hole behind that you can't even imagine because somebody has to clean up and I guarantee it ain't the cops. They don't clean up. I got a flying house. Sorry. Um, it definitely doesn't get easier. You just learn how to you learn to cope, handle it. You cope better. It doesn't get you, easier. You, my, you like, learn to cope. My pop has been gone for 23 years next month and not a day gets easier. You just become, you adapt right? I still miss him just as much as the first day. It still hurts just as much as the first day, mm -hmm. but you learn to accept that feeling and to keep pushing because that's what they would want you to do. You know, um, of course I couldn't imagine. I, I don't, I, I, I like, I, I don't really know how to respond to a lot of this. So I'm sorry if I'm. No, uh, you're fine. Nobody knows how to react. Um, nobody, it, it's suicide is painfully common, but it's not talked about enough for people to really understand that sometimes you can't, there just sometimes you just don't have words. There's not words. There's nothing that anybody can say that's going to make me feel better about the situation. Right. There's nothing that anybody can do to make me feel this situation. I have to continue to go on. I still have to put up a Christmas tree two weeks before Christmas. You know, I, I still have to go and, and do the presents and, and all of this stuff. And I have to keep going. I have to face anniversaries, you know, the anniversary of when we met, when we started dating our wedding anniversary, you know, and, and they're all just this, this twisted reminder that he hit the unsubscribe button you know, it's, it's not like when I lost my mom to cancer. It's not like when I lost my dad to a heart attack. It's totally, totally a different thing to know that this wasn't, I mean, it's on a completely different level than losing somebody to cancer or car accident or whatever. And then you have suicide that's over here. That's its own little bubble. It's its own little sphere. And it doesn't get talked about enough. And people don't understand the depression that I've gone through and the anxiety that I've gone through because of all of this. But I would gladly go through this 10 times over if it meant that I could have him back and fix him. You if know? If you could tell one person who's maybe been only in your shoes having lost someone, one, if you could tell them one thing, what what would that be? What, what was, what do you think maybe the, what was, because like you said, there's nothing really you could do to help someone. Um, but when they don't, I guess I'm trying to think of how to word this. Like, so, because like you said, a lot of people don't understand it. They don't understand, like if a person's, you know, much older and they pass of old age, or if they pass of cancer, that is, like you said, that's different than losing someone who took their own life. And as... <sighs> I don't know how, I don't, I, I don't know how to ask this question, I guess. I have, I have talked to other suicide survivors, other spouses. We have a couple here in town. Um, you know, there's a, a little tiny itty bitty group of us um, who have lost our spouse to suicide. And basically the only thing that we can do is remind each other that there was nothing you could do. This was a choice they made 
this is not a reflection on you. It's not a reflection on your marriage or your relationship. It's, it's not a reflection on anything but them. And we have to accept that choice that they made. As hard as it is, we have to accept it. But it wasn't your fault. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. He was the one who made that choice. And we just kind of have to have compassion for each other. It's okay to grieve. Sometimes we'll get together over coffee and we'll just sit there and stare at our coffee cups. You know, we're just kind of lost in our own thoughts. But we're there together. Sometimes all you can do is sit there and hold somebody's hand while they cry. Yeah. And sometimes that's all they need. Sorry. You're okay. You're okay. I've been I've been fighting it back. I've gotten the goosebumps a few times. I'm like, keep your act together, Lily. You can do this. Um, yeah. I I, I like I, this is this is one of those topics where like I'm I'm blindsided and I like I said I, I don't know what to say. I've not been through this. Um, I've lost one of my friends to suicide. Um, but we had grown apart over the years. It still sucked, but we weren't like close like we had been, you know, in our younger years. Um, so I don't think that it it affected me as much as if we had remained super close friends, but it was still hard because he was such a good soul, but a lot of people bullied him and picked on him and, um, yeah, it, it actually, I've lost two friends because Vanessa too, you know, um, but it's, you guys don't know what people are going through. You don't know what their family life is like, their work life, their relationships. And like it literally, listen, it literally costs nothing. It is free 99 to be nice. Free, free 99. That's my favorite price. And that's all it costs to be kind. So please yeah. be kind. Um, there was a, a story that has stuck with me since I was about 10. Um, one of the magazines that my parents got was Reader's Digest. I don't know if any of you are even old enough to remember Reader's Digest. But my parents got Reader's Digest faithfully. And there was a story in there about a guy who lived in San Francisco. And uh, the location is actually pertinent. But anyway, he lived in San Francisco. He just gone through a divorce, you know, wife took off, wife took the kids, wife took the dog, you know, the, the typical story. Um, he felt like he was in a dead end job. He hated his boss. He felt his coworkers hated him. He just really felt that he had nothing to live for. And so he decided one day that he was going to go end it. He was going to go jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, but he was going to walk to get there. So he started walking and he got about halfway between his apartment and the bridge and he decided if one person smiles at me, I will go home. One person, that's all he wanted was just one person to smile at him. So he started walking, he kept going and he got a, a few more blocks down the road and somebody smiled. Somebody passed him on the street and smiled and he kind of stopped in his tracks and he thought about it and he's like, I made that promise. If one person smiled, I was going to go home. And he turned around and he went home. The person who smiled probably will never know that they saved a life that day. You never know what somebody is going through. You don't know what kindness is going to help someone. You know, I, I sat there a couple of days after my husband died and, and um, my work had come together and they kind of got me like this little care package. And then there, there was a gift card to Starbucks and I don't normally get Starbucks. Um, it's a, a rare treat for me. I like to spoil myself self every so often. So there was a Starbucks thing. So I'm like, we going to Starbucks. And so I drove down, I got in line, had to wait forever because you know, it looks like a methadone clinic and I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm waiting and I'm trying to, you know, give out my, my order. Cause I don't know the sizes. I just ordered a 55 gallon drum and hope they understand what that means. And so I get my order and I, I creep through the line. I finally get up to the window and lady said, the car in front of you just paid for your order. Here you go. <laughs> this was like two or three days after my husband had died. I was sitting there sobbing in the car and 
they paid for my Starbucks order. She didn't ask me if I want to pay for the car behind. She just said, hey, somebody paid for your order. Here you go. Have a nice day. Wow. And that made me... Because they didn't know. They didn't I've know done that. Pick me up, I needed. You know. I had a, <laughs> I had a guy in a pickup truck cussing, cussing me out, in the drive-through behind me. I, I to this day don't know what I did or why, right? But he was screaming at me, and so I just stuck my thumb out the window and I gave him a thumbs down, you know, because I had the kids, so I couldn't flick him off, and uh, <laughs> I paid for his food and left. The look on his face. You know, because I could see he was like, you know, and the, I told her, I, I told her, I, I said, I said, just tell him to try to be a little bit more kind to people. It goes a little bit further. So I wonder if she told him that or not. But yeah, there, there's a, a quote that I found and it's actually on my, my Instagram. It's kind of down in, in the comments a little or feed, whatever it is, a little bit. But, uh, you know, it goes back to horses because, you know, a horse, I, everything revolves around horses says you get more carrots with a soft knicker than with pinned ears. And, you know, pinned ears is when the horse you know, flattens its ears back against its head. That's a very unhappy, very angry horse. And it's true. You, you do get more carrots with a soft knicker than pinned ears. And so even though I've been through all of this and I probably have every right in the world to be very angry and very bitter, I'm still there for my friends. I still reach out to my friends, especially if I haven't heard from them in a while and I'm used to hearing from them on a regular basis. Um, I'm, I'm very sensitive, believe it or not, I'm, I'm actually very sensitive to the comments that I see in my own streams of, you know, you can tell when somebody's hurting and when somebody's just being a jerk. Yeah. And so when somebody's hurting and they really need to talk, I do ask them, do you need to talk? I've had people, um, since I started that Insta, I've had people reach out to me through Insta and they just wanted somebody to talk to. And sometimes it doesn't take anything more than an hour of your time to reassure them that they're not alone, you know, to let them know that they are important, they are valuable, they are needed, it's worth it, keep going. You know, the night is always darkest just before dawn. And my hundred year old grandma, who is still with us, believe it or not, she was born 1923, she's still here. One of her favorite things to tell me all through my life, all through my 47 years on this planet is if it's, um, if it's not okay, you know, everything will be all right in the end. And if it's, if, if it's not all right, it's, it's not the end. So you, you just kind of have to keep going. You have to push yourself through this stuff. That's why I say that my story is somebody else's survival guide, because I know that if I can make it through it, so can you. And everybody says, oh, it's, you know, oh, you're such a strong person. I don't know how you did it. Well, I don't know how I did it either, but I didn't have a choice. Right. And if I can make it through, so can you, right. you know, you can make it through this. You can power through your own depression, your own anxiety. I talked about this in my own stream last night, like people, I, I have a degree in psychology. Okay. It's only a bachelor's, but I have a degree in psychology and I'm 187% convinced that all of us have a mental illness of some kind of a varying degree, depression, anxiety, ADHD. Sometimes, you know, we can go into the cluster B of the personality disorders. We can, you know, some of us are more severe than others, but we all have a little bit of mental illness going on. And we just have to be compassionate and understand that somebody's going through some shit. We got to be there for them. So if, treat if I can do this, be treated. yeah, but if I can do this, I guarantee that anybody in here can, you, you have to decide, you have to make a conscious choice to say, okay, this hurts, but I'm not going to let it end me. You know, it, mm -hmm. it may have, ended them, but I have to keep their memory alive. So every time I go on one of these shows and I talk about my story or I talk about my story in my own life, I just, I'm doing it so that people realize that they're not alone. You know, you are not the only person that has ever felt that way because there are millions of people who have come before you that do reach out to somebody, reach out to me, reach out to the suicide hotline. You know, there's mental health resources in your community, even if it is something as Catholic charities. Now, people like cringe when I say Catholic charities, but they offer low, low cost health
help to anyone, regardless of your religious affiliation. They are there to help. They offer counseling services. They have, um, I know my local one has like a little, a little thrift store where you can go in if you can't afford something and you need a winter coat, here you go, have a winter coat. Um, and you, they're there to help. I've taken people to them and sat them down and said, this person needs more help than I can give them. I'll sit there and hold their hand, but right. I need you to help them. I need you to do this for me. And they start getting the help that they need. And, you know, mental health is expensive in this country because there's medications and there's insurance and there's deductibles and there's copays and, you know, all of, all of that crap. But you walk into, you know, Catholic charities and they don't deal with any of that. They're just like, okay, let's help you. Let's get you the help that we, that you need. I've known a couple of counselors for them. They are licensed counselors. They're licensed therapists. They know what they're doing, but they're offering this stuff at low or no cost because mm -hmm. every life matters. Yeah. Every life. Facts, 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 facts. Um, unfortunately, I got to let me let Jay in the box to do the closing. You can stay and we can still talk. Oh, Mark, okay. he's trying to come back to you. We're, we're going to let everyone back in the box. We're going to do the little, let Jay do the closing and then we can continue. I just have one last thing to say. This, 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 this is this is who saved my life during my my bad times right here. So don't shy away from having a pet around, guys, because as much as he's being a little shit right now, um, <laughs> he he literally was there for me. And if I didn't have him, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here today. Okay. So and horse, thank you so much for sharing your story. I can't wait to come uh, get to know you more. Appreciate you. Thank you, Lily, for having me. Thank you. Where did Jay go? Okay, this is my little guy with his makeshift cone because he's trying to eat himself raw, so we had to stop it. I have to go outside to show my. It's a love-hate relationship with this app, I'm telling you. I know, I know. So yeah, this is to stop him from chewing his butt because his allergies got him itchy. And I don't, I don't like the cones. And then if I let him chew, thank you. If I let him chew himself, we're gonna end up at the vet with holes in his butt. Look at it! Look at him grinning. Like, yeah, so what? <laughs> Let's go. Hi, baby. Thank you, Scott. Everybody's hugging their pets that saved their life. I know. So. Just mm. oh, the battle bot. Let's go. Thank you. Oh, you want some love too? Okay. Hi, baby number two. Oh my gosh. So I had to come out and show mine. Mine don't come in the house. Right? <laughs> I wonder why. I know. He did, but look, he took his Benadryl, so he's all like, <laughs> he's a big baby. Um, yeah. He's he had yeah, a better drill does I think give him a little bit of a whatever, but um yeah 
today's show hit hard. Thank you guys. It was a good show. It's it's tough subject matter, but it um needs to be talked about. Mental health needs to be talked about. Suicide needs to be talked about. We cannot hide behind it's uncomfortable. I don't want to cry. I don't want my feels kicked. It's because I, I got glasses on. You know, yeah, it's you, definitely not talked about enough. I agree. No. It's something that needs to be addressed. Like, if somebody has diabetes, what do you do? You tell them to go to the doctor. Right. Why can't we destigmatize mental health? It's real, it exists. I have a copy of the DSM 4 TR. I don't have the five, but the 4 TR is like this thick of everything mental that can go wrong with a person. And they go back and they revise it and they go over it and they come up with new treatments and they realize that there's more problems. And it's just, it's as thick as Grey's Anatomy. Like everything that can go wrong with your.